I know that we're working on an early model car here. Basically, those of you with the ZXs don't feel left out. The battery is just important with what you've got. The only difference is that you can have That's just where I wanted that. You have the other style hold down brackets. These are available also. The part number on this one is a 24420M6600. And these should be replaced routinely. They are just a piece of metal that has paint on them. They will rust and corrode. They, if they break, you do have problems. Now, in your ZXs, I want to remind you, the book and most of the application catalogs list the wrong battery. The battery that you want to have in here is shorter than the 27 series battery. What they did is they simply took the application for the 70 through the 78 cars and, and repeated it for the 79 through 83s. If you have a 79 through 83 car that has a 24 series battery in it, which will put the positive over here, you are literally running the, the positive terminal within one half inch of the hood. And if this battery bracket fails and you jump up and short out to the hood, you're going to wipe out a thousand dollars of electronics instantaneously. And I see it time and time again. Get the battery that is shorter than this. And don't use a Volkswagen style. It is shorter, but it doesn't have the amperage. The battery that Interstate builds for this application is an MT34, and they list it in every catalog they have. It's the only company I've seen that's producing the right size this way, geometrically speaking, lengthwise and widthwise, and the height is correct. It will give you an extra inch of clearance over the positive terminal. Get that battery. It's 685 or 700 cranking amps. It will, it's more than uh, enough. The original battery was probably only around 475 cranking amps, but it will take and give you the clearance that you need. The original Z cars can use this tall 24 series battery and I recommend it simply because it's a lot less expensive to get a hold of. These are the Megatron series and these are the best high output they can. Interstate builds a very good five year variety, uh, 50 months, excuse me, that if you just don't want to step up to the difference of going to the Megatron, uh, I would highly recommend buying the Megatron if you can go ahead and get into what they call the green tops. The batteries have a green top on instead of a black top. And uh, get a hold of one of those if, if dollars are just really that critical. Either one will do the job for you. But if you're driving a ZX, you must use the short battery. If you use the other one, you will eventually rust out this bracket. It will bounce up on some road or, or speed bump and short out. And in the count of one, two, three, you will have no wiring left in the car. The moment that this shorts out to the chassis or to the hood, you're going to flood the entire body with all the amperage that, bought this, that the battery has in it shorting out into the body. It's going to look for a ground any way it can get back to the negative side. When it gets to the negative side, it's going to find, guess what, your fuel injection, and it's going to fry that. Any circuit that's on, your radio, your lights, your tail lights, your signals, anything that's on that is circulating positive power, one direction is going to be flooded with an over amperage the other direction and they are going to get hot and burn every wire down. The next thing it's going to start using is the throttle linkage. And it's going to get that red hot. It's going to use your speedometer cable and it's going to wipe the, the Arcival spring right out of your speedometer. This is a serious, serious problem, one that is very easily avoided. Most fuel injection problems that we see come in are based right here. The fuel injection connections that are on the ZX are integral to the original cable and it's about seventy dollars for that original cable and so you might be dissuaded by the fact that it costs that much and on top of the fact most Nissan dealers don't have it in stock. Well rather than wait a week to ten days to get one this system does famously. You can get these connectors, solder on new ends and reconnect your original two power supplies on the ZX's and have a wonderful result out of it using the shorter battery. Uh, you will never short it out again. Put a new bracket and two J-bolts back onto it and you'll, be, you'll do famously. Secondly, if you've got any chance of it, there's just a piece of plastic, thin plastic protector. The brackets themselves are still going to wrap around these batteries. The notch that's cut out in the original battery bracket was designed for a uh, 24 series battery. When you reverse them and you flip this around, you wind up with a the, the metal right out here under the edge. It's really not a problem because the shape of these units is up and off over the edge, which gives it enough room to stand proud above this without shorting out to it. But just to be careful, I like to take and put a small piece of plastic. Uh, it doesn't have to be anything substantial, just something that will be immune to the, to the acid. 
We take and use a no corrode washer, which are available as just the two little felt washers, positive and negative. Put them underneath there, and then just put a good coat of uh, Krylon battery spray protector across this area. It's nice and dry, nothing comes off on your hands, there's no goo that goes with it, it's easily removed, and you can recoat it at any time. We usually try and put a couple coats on it before we let them go and then routinely recoat this. And it doesn't hurt to hit this bolt where it attaches to the chassis. It doesn't hurt to touch the uh, spray the uh, J-bolt just to keep the corrosion. Because as the battery discharges, you get a lot of uh, hydrosulfuric vapors which are going to come wafting up out of here and they're going to attack any piece of metal they can get to. Sulfuric acid is, uh, is nasty enough when it's in a, a contained form, but the, the vaporized form of it is just as aggressive and it will attack all of the rest of the area you can get a hold of. So try and keep the, a good clean battery, even if you have to go in here and once in a while throw a little can of soda. I've seen guys that got too lazy and they just share half of their soda pop with the, with the battery and then hose it off and that probably does it about as fast as anything. They're a little stickier, but uh, any one of them will do. Enough about the battery. Can, can we get a close up of the cable? Sure. Um, I've been using a welding cable from a welding store. Um, I guess the stereo shop so really, really thick cable like that with tiny little strands in it. Um, what gauge is that? Do you know? This here is 4 gauge and it has 1,050 strands in it. I don't know if you can see that yeah. number there. But this is called 1050 heavy duty power cable. And uh, the stereo boys love it because it carries low amperage signals so well and low voltage signals very well. And it just, as one must remember, electricity travels over the surface of a wire, not through the center of it. So the more wires you have, the more efficiently you can carry amperage. And amperage is what does the work. Voltage is only the speed of which the electricity is moving, the amperage is the volume of it. So if you don't have the volume and you do have the speed, you're not going to do very much work. And starters need good amount of amperage so they can do their work. Alternators also need good connections to do their work. The injectors themselves don't need so much, but they need a nice, good, clean connection and so they're not being robbed of their voltage supply because of any other parasitic draw that may be occurring. If an alternator not putting out, or a slipping belt, or a starter that's taking too much cranking time to get the car going, or a battery that's too, it's too small to begin with, and so it doesn't give enough amperage to get the car started efficiently, so the alternator is constantly trying to recharge the battery, which is constantly flooding the system with a high voltage uh, overcharge situation. That is very bad for fuel injection. Bosch originally designed this fuel injection system to be able to compensate for the fact that after you start up your car, the voltage drops on the battery. It increases the pulse width on the injector. The injector opens and closes on a, micro, on a uh, millisecond rating. And it's not so important that you understand what those milliseconds are or that you can compare them. Unless you have a lab scope, you won't be able to see it anyway. But understand this, a low voltage situation, whether induced by resistance here, here, or anywhere in the system where it is sensed, will automatically tell the fuel injection brain that A, the car is cold, or B, we have a low voltage situation, and to increase the pulse width to compensate for the fact that you don't have the amperage to do the job. The amperage starts to burn up the injector, and the amperage also causes the, the injector to keep its pulse width wide, and so it runs rich. If you think your mileage is down and you need to buy injectors, go over here, clean this up, get your alternator cleaned up, you'd be astounded how many problems will be solved by just doing that. So, so what you're saying is, if my car is running rich and I can't pass smog, I should clean my battery terminals? Absolutely. And if your cables look like they've got a little growth going down in here, cut them off and you reattach them. Clean these cables up on both ends. Make sure. The other thing is, Nissan was, was remiss in one area. They didn't put enough grounds between the battery directly to the chassis. Originally, they had a nice little ground that was on the cable, but it was usually attached right here, right here to this bolt. In fact, this one is here. What you'll notice is this one has an extra one on it. This, this wire here is designed to do one thing, just keep a good communication between the battery and the chassis. The power that is being pushed into the chassis and returning back to the battery is far less than the power that's being pushed into the starter and the alternator through this cable. As you'll notice, this cable is connected to the starter, which it should be. Both big cables should go to the same place. One goes to the starter, this connects very close to the starter. But this power supply going into the fuel injection and the wire coming off of the starter down at the bottom all are basically of a 10 gauge size. So you really don't have to, to uh, make the wires on the return side back to the battery any bigger than the ones that are leaving. But you do at least have to have them. You need to have one there. So we call them sacrificial grounds, and we like to add them anywhere we can. 
There's a good one. The factory installs one between the alternator that you bolt on, and it bolts onto the sidewall over here just out of the harness. The wire just ducks out and, and adds an extra, extra ground. I will warn you that everything from the horn all the way through your driving lights, everything, ground through that wire there. And if you lose the connection right there, you will have more weird circuits back feeding and causing you problems. Let's get, let's get a close-up of that ground, can we? Okay. This was the original grounding point, and we've removed the bolt just to show you where it's at. And the wire itself, is screened. it's good to take and clean the area right here, get the paint off of it, and, and clean this bolt, and put the right size washer. I can't tell you, when you go to, to buy the, uh, the end of the cable that goes on here to, to make your wire hooked on, take this bolt with you, get the exact size that goes on there. Don't get one that's a lot bigger, because it's not going to connect well. You need every bit of the surface area that you've got to ground this well. Take it, reattach it, bring it back over here, and just simply tie it over, get it out of the way so it doesn't get confused with one of your power wires, and attach it back up underneath here. And this we will do. I pulled this one off here this morning to clean it. It was corroded. I then replaced it. Where's the wire that comes out of the wiring harness that screws onto that bolt? It, uh, it, I literally mail, build a new one. Okay, so it's not necessary that it goes into the harness. It just has to go over to the, to the negative side. So you said the wire comes from the alternator? And from the alternator, up? yes. And it bolts right there. Okay, so... This is, the, this is the main chassis ground. So that connection down there, you can barely see them, will probably ignore that bolt in the center of the screen. It is a big, important ground. 